morning, GON 2013 asterisk. How is everybody today? Good. So this asterisk thing has been uh, very divisive. Um, I will take ownership for coming up with it, uh, but there, there are people just on these two ends of the spectrum. Um, that who think I uh, have like real rage about it for some reason, and people who have truly embraced the asterisk. So I encourage you all to, to embrace the asterisk, um, just because I kind of feel personally attached to it. Uh, we really appreciate the fact that we are here in Tampa, finally, and that you all have stuck by us and that you've supported us so well. We talked a lot about that yesterday. Um, you're probably sick of seeing me say thank you, but, but truly I think it reflects the feelings of the staff, uh, the board of directors, everybody associated with USGIF that we were able to weather the storm in October uh, and get here this week and be able to put on uh, the kind of event that we feel we owe you uh, and it's a sort of a contract that we have with you, our members, our attendees, our sponsors, our exhibitors and, and partners. Um, this is one of the favorite parts of my piece of the GM Symposium is being involved with the awards presentation. We have a tremendous set of volunteers who pour through uh, numerous submissions on these awards. And I love walking by our conference room. Uh, to me, it sort of epitomizes everything that USGIF stands for. People from the government, people from different parts of industry, who have all left their organizational and corporate affiliations behind and are in our, in our conference room with sleeves rolled up uh, and lots of coffee going over these award recommendations and really getting into it. And it's, it's a process that is absolutely uh, clean and pure and right and the amount of uh, you know, arguing and, and passion in that room is phenomenal. And, and what it says to me every time I walk by the conference room and see that again is that's what this foundation is supposed to be about. It's, it's, it transcends government, industry, academia. It transcends uh, specific affiliations. And it is about community, about this geo community, which you know, we, we, uh, we violate all the AP style guides because we keep capitalizing geo and community whenever we put it in our magazine. But that's what we've, we feel strongly about, saying that, that it is a community, and that's, that's the essence of USGIF. So again, I say this every year because we're fortunate to have a gentleman who has walked us through, shepherded us through this process uh, for many years, who is the uh, heads up our awards committee. Uh, Kevin Jackson is currently the director of U.S. government business development sales and MDA information systems. He manages this process. He works it through from start to finish. He has you know, a full-time job and then he spends a lot of time devoting hours to USGIF to make this happen. So I'd like Kevin uh, to come up and present the awards with me. Thank you very much. Good morning. How's everybody? Good? All right. So welcome to the USGIF 2014-2013 Asterix Awards program. Keith, thanks a lot for that generous introduction and thank you for your leadership and, your, and, and really importantly your friendship. I mean that. And thank you Foundation for allowing me once again to stand here and present the awards. It is truly a humbling experience, it's an honor, it's a privilege and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. So we're here this morning to recognize the outstanding achievement of individuals and teams in support the development and promotion of the geospatial intelligence tradecraft. And as it is for all organizations, it's important to look back at our past. And I was looking at the past award winner list, and if you guys have any chance, go look at those big uh, displays and look at some of the people that have walked across the straight stage because it's a truly awe-inspiring and remarkable group of people. And the funny thing is, is they haven't stopped doing what they were doing they're still moving forward. So it's not like you guys get to win and disappear. You got, more, you got more work to do. I'd just like to take a moment. If any of the past uh, award winners from any years are in the room, if you guys could just please stand and be recognized once again, because I would like people to know who you are and come in and ask you what you've been doing since the end of the month.
Now, we have a little bit of audience participation. By applause. How many people in here have been to at least four G1s? <laughs> He's clapping. Six G1s. How many people have been to every G1? Now, here's the question. How many of this is their first time? that was going to happen. Well, welcome first-timers, and that you are the future. With the exceptional leadership, coupled with your enthusiastic engagement of the community support, the next 10 years will look to be even brighter than the first. I'd like to thank the Award Selection Committee. Some of these folks have been with me for like six, seven years, and that's Phoebe Allen, George Myers, Jean Klaus, Peter Flugraff. I just learned how to pronounce his name properly. <laughs> Gary Atkins, Gary Rogers, and Kevin Morrison were the group this year. They had an incredible amount of work to do. We actually, for the very first time, broke a record. I've never said the number before because I never wanted to say it out loud. We had 80 plus nominations submitted this year. So you guys give yourselves a round of applause. That's a lot. So GeoLint has got talent, guys. Let me just tell you real quickly how this process works. Keith mentioned it. But here's what happens. We get these 80 plus nominations in. That selection committee that was up there, they go through each and every one of them. They read them line by line. Um, then they down select their top two or three. Okay? So I've got mine, somebody else has theirs, and then a debate starts. And you've got to protect your nominee. And then you're going to try to get the other person to change theirs to yours and yours to theirs. It's a big mess. And it gets kind of heated sometimes, and then everybody you know, kind of starts to understand. And then once we have that time out, we vote. I've said it every year that I don't vote, but this year we had a tie, and I actually had to vote. I don't ever have to do that again, because I tell you, it was very difficult. And if you don't believe me how difficult it was, I would encourage anybody in this room can volunteer to be on that committee. Uh, I put out an open call. If you're the first person of the three that I asked to be my, uh, my rolling volunteers, you'll get a chance to see what this process is like. So give that a shot. You guys ready to get started? All right, let's go. The first award goes to academic achievement. Come on, guys. Sharp group right here. This is the Dover Area High School Geospatial Technology Program. They're working toward educating students about the geospatial technology industry at the high school level. Dover Area High School is a public school with a thousand students. They have limited funds, and they're located in York County in South Central Pennsylvania. The geospatial technology program was started in 2007 as an after-school program. I've never signed up for that. In 2008, the first class was offered for credit. Since 2008, the program has grown into a four-course program that is taught to 9th through 12th graders with a senior capstone internship possibility. The program's main partner is Washington College in Maryland. Today, you guys will be in the booth, right? So get a chance, get a chance to go and visit that booth. You get a chance to see these folks some more. The partnership was used to develop the geospatial technology curriculum. The curriculum is now delivered through a modal, modal little platform. I thought that was a misspelling. I called last night to make sure. I never heard of it. Dover currently has graduates studying geospatial technology at the following institutions. Washington College, Harrisburg University, Penn State University, Pittsburgh University, and Shippenburg University. Students have interned with the following community agencies. The Pennsylvania Department of uh, Conservation and Natural Resources, York County Planning Commission, York County 911, County Control, local municipalities, and the Washington College Production Lab. They're very proud to announce that they have students in the armed forces utilizing the geospatial technology training. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge the USGIF 2014 Academic Achievement Award winners. Accepting the award, and we're going to hand these beautiful awards out later. Just real quick, this is what they look like. These are hand-blown. Each one of these is unique as each of our winners are unique. You guys can put this in here. Where do you want to put this? In your room. 
Let's just go down the line and talk about who's here. Raise your hand if you would. The director of the program is Mr. Charles Benton. Brand new superintendent, Dr. Jason Conway. Director of Technical Education, Bill Ricard. Scott Good, the GIS teacher. Now let's talk about the important folks here. How about Shelby Kent, 11th grader? How about Casey Long, 11th grader? And my man who's got some serious dance moves, you might go check him out later, Zachary Pelkin, 12th grader. Research, Mr. Medina. You know I got jokes when I'm home. Richard Medina is an assistant professor of geography and geoinformation science at George Mason University. Go Patriots, you know I want them, right? We'll talk about that. He's one of the preeminent young researchers focusing on spatial analysis and geographical portrayal of terrorist social networks. He has made significant contributions to security studies, specifically to geospatial intelligence. Richard's research is at the foundation of an evolving counterterrorism strategy that exploits human geography, social network analysis, and spatial analysis of terrorists' use of socio-geographic hybrid space domains. He's really smart. He is also a co-author of a new book titled The Geography of International Terrorism that approaches the study of terrorism through a geographic lens. Richard shared something with me, and this is the real deal here. This is, you, I haven't even told you this yet, Keith. Richard's been to six geoins. You raised your hand when I said six. And the first time he came, he was a student. Not high school. College, yeah, here. The first time he came, he was a student. And I'm so pleased that when he leaves GEOINT 2014, he will be your 2014 USGIF Academic Research winner. Ladies and gentlemen, Richard Medina. <laughs> Next category is administrative support. This is only the second time we've done this, and we've got somebody to talk to you about. Support. Melissa Marks serves as the executive officer to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency support team to the U.S. Department of State. The mission of the NGA support team to the U.S. Department of State is to broaden and deepen GEOINT support to and collaboration with the Department of State and USAID by implementing the NGA strategy. As XO, she manages the organizational, administrative, and support activities for the NST. Prior to joining the state NST in February of 2013, Melissa served as XO for the Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Central Asia Division within the Bureau of Central and Southwest Asia. Working at the NST for her, as her first experience working beyond the NGA headquarters since she joined the organization in April of 2011. Melissa earned her MA in International Relations, concentrating in Middle East Studies and International Economics from Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies in May 2010. She wrote her master's thesis on education reform in Jordan while pursuing, while pursuing your degree. <laughs> it was a requirement. <laughs> she interned at the Congressional Research Service in the U.S. Department of State in the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights, and Labor. She also, in her spare time, <laughs> has a BA in history of the, at the University of Virginia, Wahoo Wah, I went there too. All right. <laughs> Melissa currently lives in Alexandria, Virginia, with her wife, Tracy Walker, who's a BAE multimedia analyst at NGA. Can you imagine the conversations they have over the dinner table? Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge your 2014 USGIF award winner for administrative support, Ms. Melissa Martz.
next category is industry. Come on, industry. You guys look awfully, you guys look awfully CEO-ish and sharp. <laughs> look at that. Pixia Corporation is a longtime champion for advancing worldwide open standards for accessing large volumes of geospatial data using interoperable web-based solutions. In support of the geospatial standards community, Pixia spent nearly a year designing and developing a wide area motion imagery specific specification focused on performance and scalability to enable the globally federated dissemination of whammy data. I heard he did all the real work. I found out this Pixia donated this specification to the Open Geospatial Consortium, who adopted it this year as a best practice. This accomplishment and endorsement established a worldwide standard for their 480 plus international members for accessing all the data, all the time, for worldwide whammy consumers using the tools, architectures, and workflows of their choice. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge the 2014 USGF Award winners from industry, Mr. Patrick Ernst, Rudy Ernst, and Scott You guys remember when it was just Pat and Rudy with the little teeny booth in the corner? Yeah. You guys remember that? Have you seen their display now? <laughs> Scott, I know they had you hiding when you were back in those days. You were doing work. Next uh, category is government. Agency, Bob Arbeck, has been an unyielding force for the last six years in educating, advocating, and formalizing the analytical tradecraft known as activity-based intelligence, or ABI. In 2010, after two years of research and drafting, his, and drafting, his office under the then USDI, Mr. Clapper, published a study document that underpinned the ABI movement we see today. Also, during this time, he released the first ever ABI RFI to industry, outlining concepts and technical challenges, and setting the stage for what is now a program of record to provide NBA and the IC with ABI enterprise services. His subsequent move to NGA to help coordinate ABI activities agency-wide has helped keep the agency on the leading edge of thought and technology in the IC. The countless improvements associated with ABI to numerous to mention will help all of us deal with big data, help prevent surprise, and revolutionize the way we do business from analytical, analytical tradecraft to data handling and infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2014 USGIF Award winner for government, Mr. Robert L. Arbetter. Sat three explorations, explorations. I'm only going to say this one time. I had to work on this one. This is the U.S. Army Surface Missile Defense Command Army Strategy GWINT Division TACSAT 3. We're going to go with this TACSAT 3. <laughs> the TACSAT 3 exploration, exploration team developed and refined a rapid exploitation process for the advanced responsive tactically effective military imaging spectrometer, spectrometer armaments. It's a hyperspectral sensor on the TS-3 satellite. The team developed the concept as a follow-on to the TS-3 experimental phase. Implementation of the capability began in June 2010 with the transition of the satellite to operations. Mr. Brian Collins developed and coded the initial process, while Mr. Tim Patcher refined and improved that process. Mr. Keith Pence led the analytical effort as the spectral subject matter expert. During the course of the 20-month operational phase, 
The team analyzed and created reports for over 1,700 hyperspectral data sets, analyzing nearly every TS-3 collect. This was the first time that a space-borne hyperspectral sensor had been made available for operational use and that rapid first phase exploitation had been accomplished on data from such a platform. Well, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome or they're on the stage your 2014 USGIF award winners, Mr. Brian Collins and Mr. Keith Pence. special reception for them. You get to learn a little bit more about what they did, their accomplishments, and what their goals are. Thank you so much.